Hello, Faithful! I'm your host, Kevin Crothers, Station Manager for White Throne Metal Radio, Staff Writer for Heaven's Metal Magazine. Today on Top 10 Songs, Christian Thrash Metal Band, Sacrament. But before we start, would you click the subscribe button and give us a like so we might get out of YouTube anonymity? I'd appreciate it. So let's get started. Coming out of the Keystone State of Pennsylvania is perhaps one of the most overlooked thrash bands with a Christian point of view. Of course, today I'm talking about REX recording artist Sacrament. With a two-album discography at what I would call the tail end of the golden age of Christian metal, it's not hard to see why. I mean, does this mean they've been forgotten? No, not at all. Otherwise, why would I be doing this, I suppose? But they definitely never reached the same plateau of audience familiarity as label mates Believer or Living Sacrifice, let alone Deliverance or Tourniquet or Vengeance Rising. And in my opinion, they should be spoken of in the same breath. The bone-crunching riffs of these two albums easily rival their contemporaries and their secular counterparts with influences taken from Creator, Death, Sacrifice, perhaps even bits of Testament and Forbidden Evil. Sacrament had a more decidedly European flavor, frankly. And I know myself, when I first heard that bone-crunching debut bruising album, I immediately heard a comparison between vocalist Mike Tyrone and Testament's Chuck Billy. Now, being from the Bay Area, perhaps that's why it kind of jumped out at me initially. I noticed it. It sounded that way to me at the time. Maybe not so much these days. The debut album, Testimony of Apocalypse, is a product of its 1989-1990 recording and release. With a booming, large production value, courtesy of producer Doug Mann, who was the founder of REX Records and president thereof, and I believe there was no small contribution as well from Believer's own Kurt Bachman and drummer Joey Dobb. Sacrament delivered up an album of pure metal cacophony, melding thrash and death metal, Testimony of Apocalypse, showcases a band that deserved and still does deserve to be heard. Vocalist Mike Tyrone, guitarist Mike DeDont. D. Donato, apologize, guitarist Brian Toy, bassist Eric Nye, and drummer Paul Graham, they delivered a pummeling album that even before its release was being hyped as the heaviest Christian band in the world, perhaps. To be said, here on the West Coast, we never saw their original demo, let alone heard it before the album came out. Uh, the band itself rarely, apparently, didn't do that many live shows, frankly. Um, whether it was, though, due to a lack of foresight or just not knowing there was an actual scene, as it were, that demo escalated in demand, and to this day, it's like finding Waldo without his cap. Um, it did get released um, on one of the reissues. I have... For the first album, I have the original REX release, Testimony of Apocalypse, along with the uh, retroactive reissue of 2014. There was another it reissue from M8 in 2005, which contained that demo. I don't have it. So I used to have the demo. Frankly, I had one, an original but what I like to call the Great Purge of 2001, 2002, it's long gone, folks, never coming back. It would take the, the band nearly two years for the follow-up to that album, however. There would be several things that would have changed uh, in the ensuing years. Released in 1992, Haunts of Violence, um, again, the 
original and the 2014 reissue. Haunts of Violence follows some of the same musical brutality that the debut brought. High velocity riffage with powerful and head splitting technicality which are aided by a much more direct approach in the production and mix department. This particular musical platter was produced by fellow REX bandmate Kevin Ayers, vocalist from metal outfit Haven, a band scheduled for a video on this channel of its own in the not too distant future. Not just the production, though, would be different in the band's follow up, changed the band's lineup changed as well. According to an interview in White Throne Magazine number 12 with Eric Nye and new vocalist Rob Wolf, guitar player Brian Toy stepped away from the band to take care of some personal issues, frankly, to help him refocus, and he moved on, forming his own band. You know, things went well, apparently, with them. But also guitar vocalist Mike Tyrone was replaced, apparently, due to issues of the throat, uh, an instrument one can't replace if damaged. New vocalist Robert Wolf stepped in, bassist Eric Nye, guitar Mike D. Donato, and drums Paul Graham crafted this follow-up album. However, it was apparent from the, my earlier statement, you know, that the new vocalist in tow was one Mr. Robert Wolf. And who is now, and he was delivering the vocal goods, and deliver he does. Not necessarily as guttural as his predecessor, but powerful, raw, with a razor sharp voice. Brilliant sounding for this new album. Haunts of Violence has a much drier sounding affair uh, production wise, bringing the carnage right into your living room. Not lost in the reverb or other production values of its predecessor, Haunts of Violence is perhaps even a bit more intricate, a bit more technical. But they don't sacrifice power, speed, and the immediacy of the compositions within. Now I must admit, this album has taken me more of an effort to get into than the debut. Uh, you see, when I first heard it back in probably 1993, myself, when I first heard it back then, I, I was kind of disappointed, frankly. Um, the, it sounded so different. Um, the Different vocals, different production. It, 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 I really loved the debut. I mean, I really loved the debut. I still can remember cranking that thing in my car like nobody's business. I mean, Testament, Sacrament. Forbidden Evil, Megadeth, Sacrament, Sacrament, Sacrament. I mean, I, I was playing a lot of thrash, a lot of stuff back then. Um, and so when I heard this album, Haunts of Violence, it was almost like hearing a brand new band, in my opinion. So, and before we get into the top 10 here, lyrically, Sacrament were a very evangelical-oriented band, not in a cheesy way. Um, lyrically, there is a lot of depth and theological discussion. Uh, things are well thought through um, on both albums and presented in an intelligent way. There's a lot of scripture that is sung, that is put through on these albums. It's pretty amazing. It's designed, really, to appeal to the intellect and point to the scripture. That being said... Let's get into the 10. Coming in at number 10, from Haunts of Violence, Seared Consciousness. Consciousness, a twisting cavalcade of riffs and tempo changes 
This track features several different 90 degree twists and turns with some amazing drumming here from Paul Graham. It's almost like getting a 10 minute song condensed into just about half the time. Number 10 was Seared Consciousness coming in at number 9 off of Testimony of Apocalypse, Mortal Agony. <laughs> A bullet train with a few side steps into a few side boards. Mortal Agony has a great breakdown before the guitar solo, which is like being hit with a mallet in a whack-a-mole game. Vocalist Mike Tyrone gives a vociferous vocal delivery, like pouring a 50-gallon drum down a funnel. All the while, the band is moving through a set of powerful riffs, which hit like a sledgehammer. Mortal Agony comes in at number nine. Onward to number eight. Number eight, Destructive Heresies. Destructive Heresies here comes in at number eight. It is an also a collection of great riffs which devour your brain capacity while Rob's vocals, he lays it out. Reasons for the existence of a creator while delving into various elements of philosophy. What more needs to be said? Next. Coming in at number seven, Testimony of Apocalypse. track of their debut album starts with a march of armies of the Armageddon. With a guttural growl, this song takes flight into the stratosphere with a pummeling speed of a Saturn V rocket with the, all the guitar histrionics to accompany it. Some tempo changes bring some slower bits into it. The gang vocals on the chorus, however, add to the overall metal bruising given here. What a song. Coming in at number six, excuse me, seven, Testimony of Apocalypse. Moving on. Coming in at number six from Haunts of Violence, Under Threat of Death. song about martyrs and could you be one perhaps one of the most straightforward styled songs on haunts of violence it's another power pile driver of a track with several breaks and a really nice picked out interlude right after the guitar solo strong song under threat of death comes in at number six onward coming in at number five Absence of fear.
starting with an acoustic intro with both guitars and bass. A tremendous riff during the verse, which launches into a chorus with, again, some of those awesome stacked gang vocals. Fear! Not to be trifled with. Great song. Absence of Fear comes in at number five. Onward. Number four. We're into the top four. Off of Haunts of Violence also. Carry the Corpse. Starting with an almost staccato like feel in the riff before it settles into a whiplash during the chorus, Carry the Corpse provides Rob Wolf a vehicle to deliver a punch vocally in the chorus. I mean, Carry the Corpse! Highly memorable, bristling guitar solo placed and couched inside a brilliant riff. A fantastic song comes in at number four, Carry the Corpse. Moving on. Number three, Souls in Torment. Souls are torment. Not to dare to feel the pain. Frost, yeah, in the Lord. Sign in a fuss and love you later. The pressure. Souls in Torment comes in at number three, an acoustic intro which leads right into one of the finest vocal performances Rob Wolf gives on this album. A tremendous riff with various tempo and time changes, notes that descend and lead into an ascending chord progression, going one way and then another, it, much like a roller coaster. Another bit of fabulous bass playing here holding it all together from Eric. There's a reason this song comes up on so many people's favorite song lists by this band. Not my all-time favorite song, however, but from Haunts of Violence, yes. Souls in Torment comes in at number three. Coming in at number two, Repentance. <laughs> Repentance comes in at number two from Testimony of Apocalypse. It's a fantastic opening riff with an arpeggio over the top that is almost groovy uh, before it launches into a full-on thrash fest of speed and vocal power. Hearing John 316 placed to music like this is like a backbreaker. Just absolutely crushing. You'll hear Mike pretty much saying, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. I can't do it. You know, it's an extreme minute extravaganza that just bristles with power, bristles with truth. And I couldn't stop playing it back in the day and revisiting it again. I, I can't tell you how many times I've listened to this song since I started replaying it. 
Number two is Repentance from Testimony of Apocalypse, which leads me into my number one song from Sacrament. I've loved this song since it came out. Um, it's on the debut. It doesn't seem to get a lot of love from everybody else, so I'll just call it a deep track. I think it's brilliant. That song comes in number one, Valley of Dry Bones. Your Valley of Dry Bones comes in of my number one sacrament song based on Ezekiel 37. This song has a memorable chorus, grooves amongst the pure buzzsaw of a riff that appears three different times in this song. I mean, it sounds like a buzzsaw, just unga, unga, unga. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so heavy. Um, the guitar work is off the hook. The drums are blasting throughout. At points, Mike's vocal performance sounds like he's just pulling it from the bottom of his diaphragm. Um, this song is uh, absolutely brilliant. It comes in at my favorite song. It's a heavy metal cavalcade. I mean, it's got everything. It's got so, uh, this groove type thing. Before there was groove, really. I mean, it's slower tempo, picks up, and it just, but it, it grabs you. It holds on to you. And the scripture is put to this brutal musical offering. It's my favorite song by Sacrament. Valley of Dry Bones comes in at number one. So there you have it. My top ten songs. And it ha should be noted, it has been said Within the this is 2021. It's been said, I think, within the last year or so, that the members of the band have, in it, part two members of the band, have at some point gotten together, apparently putting something together. Um, obviously, life and the pandemic and all this kind of stuff has probably gotten in the way to a bit of that. But it would be definitely worth hearing. Hey, can you give us a four or five song EP? Uh, to hear what you guys sound like now. Absolutely would, would love to hear some new music. The band itself broke up apparently in 1994. Changing tides, I'm assuming. Life changes, life moves on. So there you have it. My top 10. What are your top 10? Because they're going to be different from mine. Put them in the comments below. Please, until the next video, don't forget to say your prayers. And God bless.